Now, if we go through these lower areas of the brain and we organize those properly, when we get up into the cortex, all right, the thinking part of the brain, hopefully then it becomes properly organized. And at that level, that's very important because as you get up into the, the cortex, we start getting what's called lateralization. Lateralization means one hemisphere of the brain, if you will, takes primary control. And that dominant hemisphere of the brain is in charge of some pretty important things, such as logical thought, analytical thought, specific long-term memory, okay? Kind of, kind of biggies, all right? If we lack a dominant hemisphere, you can almost equate it with having, if you will, a preschool brain, all right? Generally, that organization and that laterality kicks in at about six years of age. And at six years, you can see really the language function taking off, and you really see logical thought and analytical thought. You start seeing control of emotionality with thought. All right, so the kids who do not reach that point where they get that level of organization, to some degree, are what we call neurologically disorganized and lack some of those really important functions. Now to have a dominant controlling hemisphere, one of the things you see is that you have a dominant controlling hand, eye, ear, and foot that are all on the same side of the body. Okay, meaning if you're right-handed, you should be right-eyed, you should be right-eared, you should be right-footed. Or all left-sided. By the way, there's nothing wrong with being left-sided. Okay. In fact, somebody once said only left-sided people are in their right minds. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> By the way, for what it's worth, in, in my work I've actually discovered that left-sided people tend to, in the in the higher professions are, are better represented by left than right-sided people. It's an inordinate number of, for example, left-handed doctors. Okay. Uh, lawyers, I don't know. <laughs> So it's not bad to be left, but you want to be all left. Um, I assume you know which is your dominant hand if you have one. Let me show you very quickly how to find out which is your dominant eye if you don't know which one that is. By the way, if you're myopic, all right, if you're nearsighted, chances are your dominant eye is your weaker eye. And you have the stronger prescription typically in your dominant eye. And the reason for that is Myopia is created by near point work. And because your dominant eye is doing more of the work, your dominant eye tends to be more myopic. Okay, okay to test this quickly, find a spot, like in the, up in the corner. And with both eyes open, point at a spot up on the wall. Okay, point both eyes open. Now close or cover your right eye. Some of you, it's the other right eye. Okay, now, all right, point, again, both eyes open, close or cover the right eye. If your finger appeared to move when you close the right eye, your right eye is probably dominant. Okay, point again, both eyes open. Close or cover your left eye. If it appeared to move when you close the left eye, your left eye is probably dominant. If it moved both times, you do not have a dominant eye. And if you didn't crawl and creep, you're probably confused. <laughs> yeah. By the way, speaking of not crawling and creeping and being confused, uh, there's a British comedian, I don't even know if he's still alive, named Benny Hill. Do you remember Benny Hill? Benny Hill, if he was being a normal person, okay, his normal people walked out on a stage like this. Okay. If he was being one of his many characters who didn't function too well, they walked out on the stage like this, okay, in a homolateral pattern. Right. Smart guy. Okay. If you walk in a homolateral pattern, get down and crawl and creep. I don't want to fix that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now that was a very crude test of your far point visual dominance. If we were Testing a child, we'd test that in a number of different ways. We'd also test 
near point visual dominance with, with some other techniques. And again, both if you're right handed should be on the right or on the left. Uh, if you wink, everybody wink one eye. Okay. You probably winked your subdominant eye. Okay. And if you wink both eyes, either you're mixed eyed or you wink a lot, one or the other. Okay. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> auditory dominance. Generally, you know, if you're straining to really hear something, you tend to turn one ear to the sound, and that's probably your dominant ear. Many, many, many people have loused up their auditory dominance with a little thing called a telephone. All right, because you have a tendency to put the phone to what should be your subdominant ear so you can write or do whatever anymore. It used to be just writing, now it's everything. All right. <clears throat> and again, right-handed should be right-eyed, right-eared, right-footed, left-handed, left-eyed, left-eared, and left-footed to go with it. <coughs> to whatever degree those things are off, you're going to lack those dominant hemisphere functions. And relative to learning issues and attention issues, that dominance can be very, very significant. Okay. So that's something you might want to look at in your kids.